Hey everyone, welcome back. You're here with Lawrence. Thank you for joining me again. Today we're here to discuss how to conquer doubts. And before we can conquer anything, just like fear, we first have to understand what a doubt is. So what is a doubt? And I was thinking about that, and for me, you know, whenever I have a good idea, something like, I want to go and speak at this high school and go and inspire the kids to go and, and live their greatest lives ever. From the depths of my brain, this ignorant, arrogant voice comes screeching in that says, what if? You know, and I've actually personally just made an association that this doubtful thought is a young five-year-old girl just screeching that, what if this happens? What if that happens? And I, that's just my association. And that's what a doubt is, is when you have a good idea or, or, or just an idea and there's this thought that comes creeping in that says, but what if? What if you fail? What if they laugh at you? What if they just don't listen? Now that's what a doubt is for me. And a doubt is something that we can all do. Now the question I have is if we know how to doubt things, what about doubting our own doubts? So, if I use the same example, you know, I've got this great idea to go and speak at the school and to go inspire the kids, and then this doubt creeps in and this little girl says, but what if you fail? What if I don't fail? Or what if I succeed? What if I just touch one kid's life? Wouldn't that be enough? What if I stand up there and maybe I don't do it well then, but I learn how to do it better for the next time? What if this is the stepping stone to getting me to that level that I need to be? We can use that what if question very positively. We already know how to doubt. The doubt is the what if question. And if we have the what if fail, why don't we doubt that as well? Doubt the what if I fail to what if I succeed? How exciting would that be? That I'm standing in front of 200 kids. What if I touch 10% of their lives? What if I touch 20 kids out of the 200 to be the greatest version of themselves just for that day? Wouldn't that be worth it? So I'd like to give you three practical tips on how to deal and conquer with doubt. The first is to acknowledge doubt. And what you'll notice is that, you know, I, I use this young screaming girl uh, because the association I make is that she's not old enough to understand how the real world works. So she's got these good points, these what if questions, but they aren't realistic, they aren't relevant. And that already makes the doubt for me less important. So acknowledging that the doubt is there, naming it, giving it a, a persona, giving it some sort of characteristic so it's easier to deal with. The second point is to analyze the doubt and ask, is there actually any evidence that supports this doubt? So if you have the doubt that, you know, when I'm speaking in front of the school, you know, what if I fail or what if I stumble or what if I lose my speech or I forget what I'm going to say? The last 10 times that you've spoken at schools, has that happened? Has it? If it hasn't, then there's no evidence to support that doubt. And if that happens, that's great, because that means that doubt shouldn't be there, and it's an unrealistic doubt. Again, we're bringing it down to size. Now, if you look back at the last 10 speeches that you have done at a school, and maybe three or four of them you have kind of failed, that's also exciting, because that means you've got the opportunity to prove this doubt wrong. Such a cool story. One of my favorite stories is of Roger Bannister. And he's a young runner. Well, he's not young anymore. He's really old, but he was a young runner. And before the 1960s, the belief of the world was that no one could run a mile in under four minutes. It was just impossible. They even came, they got scientists involved and biokinetics involved and they tested bone density, muscle tissue, everything. And they just said, it's scientifically impossible for a human to run a mile in under four minutes. But Roger Bannister didn't believe that. And in the 1960s at one of the Olympic Games, he ran a mile in under four minutes, three minutes, 59 seconds, which is his exact time. Now what's interesting about the story is that since then, over 20,000 people have also broken the mile in under four minutes, even school kids. Do we become faster, bigger, stronger? Did our bone density and muscle tissue change? I don't think so. At least mine didn't. Is once they were able to conquer that belief, they were able to do it quite easily. Now think about the doubt. If you're able to conquer the doubt once, do you think the second time, the third time, the tenth time is going to be easier? 
It's just like Roger Bannister did. He set the world a stage to allow 20,000 other people to do what he did. Now, if we were able to conquer the belief once, twice, and again, over 20,000 times is going to be easy. And then the third one is to ask, once you've decided and acknowledged the doubt, you've seen is there actual evidence that proves it, is to then ask yourself this doubt that I'm having right now, is it relevant and is it supporting what I need to be doing? You know, if I'm standing up on stage in front of the 200 kids and this doubt creeps in my mind, is it relevant? It's going to help me get where I need to be. If not, then you need to ask yourself another question. What thought would? Asking that question is quite an empowering question. If you had to ask yourself now, what reason do you have to be happy? For me, what comes to mind is my girlfriend. Someone that makes me smile more than I ever thought was possible. If you have any reason to be happy, what would that reason be? And I'm hoping and probably you will come up with something. Asking that question is very powerful. So what would be more relevant for you in that situation? What thought would be more empowering while standing up on stage in front of these 200 kids to help you serve them and to be able to get you to where you need to be? Guys, I hope that was helpful. In quick summary, a doubt is a what if question that pretty much brings us down. But we can also doubt our doubts. Three steps to dealing or conquering doubt. The first is to acknowledge the doubt. Maybe give it a persona. Have some fun with it. Also, sometimes we take ourselves so seriously. I mean, what if we fail? What if we don't? What if this speech is not the end of my life? Maybe it's just the beginning of a new chapter, an exciting journey where I'm going to be able to go and speak at schools in America and Asia and Australia and I'm going to go and speak in the whole schooling system. I can get excited. The second is to analyze and say, does this doubt have any weight? And if it does, well then prove it wrong. Isn't that an exciting adventure in life to be able to prove the doubts wrong? And lastly, to ask, is this doubt helpful? And if not, what thought could be more empowering? Remember, as we do this more often, just like Roger Bannister, it'll become easier and easier and easier to do to a point where even a school kid can do it. Thank you for joining me today. And if you keep coming up with these tools and using these techniques, you'll get to experience what we call changing the game. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found some value in what I said. If you want to further your self-awareness and self-development and go on this journey with me, there are four things you can do. The first one is subscribe to my channel. The second one is go check out my Facebook or Twitter accounts. I do daily posts, maybe that could inspire you. You can go and check out my book on Amazon, Changing the Game, 10 Perspectives to Taking Charge of Your Life. And lastly, go check out my website, www.lawrencebull.com to go and see my newsletter, other posts, and other things that might be of interest. Hope to see you soon.